Okay, I'm talking to Emily. She uh, hails from Haiti, and Emily, you're going to have to tell us uh, if if you were, you know, your your lineage, your parents, grandparents, who was born where. Give us a little bit of context, but I'd like you to give us that if you could. Here on the, you know, I have the freelance teacher YouTube channel is where this is going to go, and uh, my legions of fans like to know who with whom I'm speaking. So tell us a little bit about yourself, and then if you could go into some of the things that we spoke about when we were talking as a group on Friday, where you told us really interesting things about what people misunderstand the most about Haiti, uh, because we see so many things in the media, uh, and I'm sure because they're just repellent and uh, obscene that what we see is not actually the real deal. So give us a little bit of background and then tell us in your opinion, if you had to pin down what would be most misunderstood about Haiti itself, uh, uh, lead us down that path. Well, to begin, all of my family is of Haitian descent, except for probably the third generation that from my uncle's side, I was born here. But my parents, all my uncles, aunts, they were all born in Haiti and they're all from Haiti. And my dad is still in Haiti as mm. of right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm only here with my mom and my okay. siblings. And your mother was born in Haiti as well? Yes. Okay. So you were born here? Um, no, I was born in Haiti. Okay. The only kids in my family that are born here are my, my mom's brother's children mm -hmm. and the grandchildren, my mom's grandchildren. Mm. Okay. But everyone wow. else is, was born in Haiti. Okay. And Haiti came up in the news uh, a bunch of times. There were a couple of big stories re with regard to Haiti um, in probably the last couple of years. Uh, and so we saw images, we saw pictures, many of them, frankly, not very flattering. And um, you had mentioned when we spoke on Friday that that's really not very close to what the place is like and, and what's going on uh, down on the island. Uh, what what should we know? What's the what's the big misunderstanding that goes on? I'm not going to deny that there's corruption because there's definitely corruption mm -hmm. within the government of Haiti, and they they make the country look horrible, which is very sad because they're corrupting their own society. But the media also plays a role because they never show the good side of Haiti. They only focus on the bad. Like you would see when something happens to Haiti, they would be replaying videos or images from when the earthquake happens. And I'm like, why, why are you only portraying the bad of this country? Like they would have programs in Haiti and stuff, people doing good. They never show that side. They always show the side that, that is horrible. The, oh, there's violent, everything like that. So Haiti's only in the news when something bad is happening. Mm. They're never in the news when they're doing something good or when the people is celebrating or doing something good. It's always when the bad is happening, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's the only uh, time Haiti ever goes in the news. Yeah, and I, I think um, from what, you know, uh, I'm quite a bit older than you are. Um, I'm from the pre-Cambrian era. And I think you're right from the beginning of my awareness of news from Haiti, news, I'm, you know, we write, we'll, we read some history in school and things like that, but um, when it does reach the news, it is extremely negative. Um, you had mentioned corruption. You're talking about governmental corruption. What is that, and how does someone as young as you have such a pulse on something like that? The government is very corrupted because they only care about their pockets. Um, because as you know, a lot of countries send aid to Haiti. People donate even though some of the donations probably don't reach there, mm -hmm. but the government does get aid or probably loans from other countries and they don't do anything with that money. All that money that the people here are coming to them, that the government receives, nothing changes. They still have no lights in their house. There is no running water in their house mm -hmm. and they're suffering. The people right. have no jobs or anything. And you're getting all types of money for aid. Mm -hmm. So where's all that money going? Hmm. That's a good point because you hear about both private and public charity, government aid, all kinds of 
fundraisers and things, especially after the earthquake um, mm -hmm. and a couple of other things that have come up of late, you have to wonder where, where, where does it go? Somebody would hear about uh, either anyone here or you or anyone down on the island would hear about, mil you hear about millions and millions of dollars. You're saying that just because there's, there, from your perspective, there's no result there's no infrastructure. There's no uh, public works, like you say, electricity and water. It's it's 2020. It's a little bit odd to hear you say no running yes. water, no electricity. Can you explain that? That's it's 2020. It's 2020. Like some people have water, some people don't, and some people. This is how they distribute the electricity. When I went down there, Mr. Marilla, mm -hmm. for the summer, we if we didn't cultivate our own electricity i'm pretty sure we would stay in the dark they give the they would give you electricity at 1 a.m in the morning till 6 a.m why do i need electricity when i'm sleeping mm. Good point. i need electricity during the daytime so i could do what i have to do if i need to blend something if i need to freeze water that's when i need electricity not at 1 a.m to 6 a.m or mm -hmm. 1 to 3 they give them in time intervals or they would or they just don't give for three days, then they give. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you don't have your own source of power, uh -huh. you're in blackout mode. Huh. That's, you so, then, so then who does get electric, or does anybody get electricity all the time, uninterrupted, without any problems? I know where my family is in a town called Pichonville. Mm -hmm. When I go up there, I always see them have electricity. I feel like, this is my opinion, I feel like only the elites get the electricity mm -hmm. it's only distributed to them and the people who are paying mm -hmm. they don't get it so and do you, do you see that have you seen that you have um where you can see people like at the, the elites as you say or maybe the wealthy i'm not even sure that they are getting electricity and water and services can have you actually seen that with your own eyes Oh, no, that's why I said I think, because mm. I haven't seen it. Okay. So I would have to see it for myself or know someone. Mm -hmm. have, but, the, have, the elders, have, have the elders, like your parents or grandparents, have they told you that this is how it is, or just one of those things that just, this is what everybody knows? Oh, this is when I visit. Like, okay. I see it happen. Like, mm -hmm. if, I didn't, if I didn't have my own source of power mm -hmm. to, to have energy in the house, I would be, it would just be totally black. Mm. Like they would, I would not be able to turn on a light. Mm -hmm. But the water thing is more. The wa water is better because if you pay for your water, you get your water. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay for it, it's just like here. If you don't pay for the water bill, then oh well. Right, right. But if you pay for your water, you get your water. The biggest problem is probably electricity because some people pay for it and they don't receive it. Hmm. So they're paying for something that they're receiving in time interval. And then the president is preaching electricity 24-7. Like, mm -hmm. Where right. is it? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And if it's so obvious, to, it, and, and it seems like it's just apparent, like there's no way to hide any of this, there's no way to sugarcoat no. it. Um, why, why is there very little movement to make a change? You know, people are always talking about making a change and making it better and you know, putting the right people in office, all kinds of things. What, in your opinion, blocks that? It seems so obvious that if, you know, politician X isn't getting the job done, then get that person out of there or, or something. Like, where, where's the, why is there so little, if any, motion on this? The people protest. They're always protesting for, mm -hmm. for them to get out and stuff. And nothing has changed. But hmm. it goes back to the fact that they only care about their pockets. They don't care about the country they live in. They don't realize that this is where you live. You don't live in a first world country mm -hmm. at the moment. So wow. if, you don't, if you don't help where you live, what about when you have a situation where you have to go to the hospital and there's no hospital? Mm -hmm. Because you failed to build a hospital during your term because you only cared about your pockets. Hmm. And you had also mentioned something uh, interesting where you talked about colorism and some division now. I mean, we see here, as we are talking on June 2nd, 2020, there's, you know, the, the well, and it's a different podcast. We can talk about this stuff later, but like color by the, the people at, at the top are use color and, and background and race to stir the pot and 
get regular people arguing and fighting with each other. You mentioned colorism down in Haiti as well, which I think of as a, a product of New York City public school education. You know, it's a it's a you know the country is majority, if not exclusively black country. Uh, the the after uh, the after effects of a of a revolution in the early 1800s. What were you alluding to when you said? Um, disparity in wealth and class and business and colorism. It was an interesting mix of topics that you brought up. Like I told Ms. Izzo before, because um, she was asking us if there wasn't racism, would people still find something to divide? Yes. Mm-hmm. People are, will always find a way to divide themselves from others. Mm-hmm. So in Haiti, it's colorism and classism. Yeah, explain that. That's, that's a different way of wording it. Then. We, don't, we don't speak that way here, you know what I mean? Because the the country's already majority black mm-hmm. i can't really be racist towards you You're the, you look like me i can't really bring you down to a level but i could separate you by color i could say the lighter people are better than the people who are darker the lighter people have better education than you and your education is less you're not smart enough you're not intelligent enough and the people who are lighter are just overall better than you so i could Find ways to separate you based on the tones, based on the skin tones. And is that what happens? Mm. If that's what happens, how do they do that? It seems like uh, everyone in the same boat, it would be pretty obvious that, hey, look, this is ridiculous. We're all here. We're all descendants of the Haitian Revolution in 1801 or 1803. But I think it's because, because if you look at the people who are who are so-called elite or have money they're all of lighter skin tones like you would say like the privileged group Mm -hmm. doesn't look like the majority Mm. so it probably gets into the head of the people that oh but these are the people that are moving forward and not people who look like me and they're not realizing that you can move forward too like stop basing these things based off of your color and start progressing and do you see that you had mentioned that uh, you also said class uh, classism and and something as well when we spoke on friday with people who run businesses and class it was a somewhat complicated mix Mm -hmm. is it the same thing in that when it comes to corporations and companies and making money and things like that probably because Hmm. Let's see how, how I can word this. You have the people, you have people who have their businesses, and then you have the people who are trying to make it in life. And mm-hmm. then they're being pressed down by the people with the big businesses and stopping them from moving forward. So it's like they have a chain attached to them and they can't move because the people at the top is not allowing them to have space to to grow their businesses so they know what they're doing they are, they want no competition and they find ways to make sure there is no competition that they're the ones making all the profit yeah and it's funny that they try to get rid of competition you see that a lot of here uh, that's one of the kind of the forgotten things in the united states where people talk about oh it's a free market and all this kind of stuff and they get angry at the free market where people at the top do the same thing here they create regulations and roadblocks so that small regular folks can't start anything and if you can't start you can't grow is that the same kind of thing that you'll see uh down in haiti as well yes i was uh i was watching a live um from this haitian man he's a social communication he has a social communication degree and he said for him to get a license to build his business it took him two months Something that should take two to three days or a week took him two months because they kept rejecting him with the license. But if you know the right people, you could probably get the license in two days. And I think that's why many of the people here get discouraged to go invest in the country because it takes so long. It's like they don't want us to come invest in the country. They make it difficult for you to invest because why would I need two months to to get a license and I'm a native to the country like you're making it difficult for me to help build you to help build the country when you don't make it difficult for somebody else who's probably a foreigner 
Yeah, and uh, and that's that's an old tactic as well with guilds and uh, groups that get together to keep other people out and they you know keep business for themselves. And that's kind of it's almost criminal because here's someone young like you who cares and willing to work and may your your advancement would help those around you. It would you you know you could employ other people, you could connect with folks, you could figure out how to use resources. And you're saying that you get blocked if you were to even try. So you, two months, well, how are you going to do nothing for two months? You've got to eat and pay bills and what have you. It seems like a system that is almost unbreakable. It discourages you. That's what it does. It discourages you. It gives you no hope. You'd be like, mm, I want to go do this, but two months? Worries I could go to another country and it's going to take me probably less than a week to get all the paperwork. And everything that I need. They um, the, continue. Go ahead. The country as a whole, everyone has to make an effort for it to change. Not only the government, the people have to help too. Because you can't really only rely on the government to do stuff for you. But all the corruption and taking money and stealing money, it's not helping the country. For example, Venezuela had a deal with, I think, I don't know if it's all the islands in the Caribbean or if it's just Haiti and DR where it's called the Petrocaribe money that they gave and it was to help build. I think you buy gas for them and then they give and then they it was some way they they exchange to help you build and then you also buy from them. DR used that money greatly. They built their country very beautifully. And and then our politicians what did they do with the money? Nothing. Probably stole it. And then, and then giving money for carnival, that's not helping the country. I'm sorry. That's not helping at all. I don't even think carnival should happen in Haiti until Haiti is stabilized. Tell us a little bit about that. Like, what's, what's carnival? What does it celebrate? And it's funny because, you know, there, you, could probably, you would probably take a lot of criticism saying that, oh, that's... You know, it sounds like it's something that is from from the past, from her, you know, that's very much related to your heritage. Um, and to not have that, I'm sure you'd make enemies and people would be critical of you. Why? Why would you say something like that? What makes you someone like you, who's paying attention and aware, uh, to say something that is seemingly so odd? Well, the whole country did not even want it. The when carnival season came in February, they burned the stands and everything to make sure that carnival did not happen because they said the money could be useful in other ways. We could celebrate and have fun when we're able to prosper. Right now we don't need fun. We need, we need help. Because the money could be useful for other things. Carnival could wait. Even though it's nice, you, the kids get to have fun, you get to celebrate, but what are you celebrating when you're, when you're in poverty? And could barely fend for yourself and you probably go days without eating but some that, people would say it brings jobs but it only brings jobs for a temporary time it doesn't bring long-term jobs right yeah and that's, and that's one of the things you know that's um that we've stressed in class both when you were in ninth grade and now in 12th that you have like bread and circuses where you know the people at the top let's say just to use shorthand let's do something fun Let's, you know, let's distract everybody from real issues and have a party. And it's an old, old trick from the far, as far back as the Roman Empire, where it was, okay, people, you know, the, the society is crumbling. Things are going poorly. Let's, um, let's put on a show. And you have huge amounts of participation. And, um, and, and oftentimes it's, it works. I'm surprised to hear you say that as a group, people were saying, no, we don't want this. And they actually burned down the stands. What's the purpose of Carnival? Is it celebrating something uh, in, the, in, in, in Haitian history? Or is it just an excuse to have fun? What's the background of it? And who burned to down the honest, stands? To be honest, I've never looked at the background of it. Because I just grew up knowing that Carnival happens in the islands. It mm -hmm. happens in all the islands. It's not only in Haiti. Right, right. But... And no, the people down in Haiti burned down the stands. Wow. And some artists, some artists, some other Haitian artists refused to um, 
go and participate because they said that the money being used to do carnival could be used for something else and they're right it could be used to do to do something else yeah like give, like like provide electricity and running water which uh uh as you very clearly in in, a, in the way that someone your age would say this is a very practical matter where all we've got to yes. do is direct funds this way um you had also mentioned when we spoke on friday um with some emotion behind it, Emily, that Port-au-Prince is not Haiti. Go into that. What you mentioned other oh, islands, yeah. you had said that that's not something, you know, that people think that that's the case, but it's not. What, what got you all, you had a, a, as in the olden days, they'd say you had a bee in your bonnet about that. What's, what is that? Oh, no, why why did that set you off? Because you're, it's like how, I'm going to use the, what's going on right now. It's like how, people generalize all black people into the same boat that what one black person does is what all black people do mm -hmm. just because part of prince looks one way it doesn't mean the whole entire island looks like that mm. you cannot generalize a whole entire country based on one city you have to look into the other stuff but that's the thing people don't look into it they just see what they see on the media and they run with it without doing any research or taking the time to understand what's happening. Me, the, I don't... Go ahead. I don't think, because people don't understand. There's a bunch of other cities in Haiti, and Port-au-Prince just looks the worst. I agree with the media there. It, it's horrible. The only place that probably looks decent is when they're coming from the airport. Mm. Yeah, they um they they do use that angle. I I'm trying to think as as you were talking about that, I was trying to think: Have I seen other images of anywhere else um from Haiti? And I don't I don't think I have, other than maybe one or two random things where the real it's really just background. Yeah. Huh. Because no one could tell me that they've seen other from not from Haitian sites from other social media outlets. You cannot mm -hmm. tell me you've seen images from Okap, um, Leogan, or all the other little islands or other cities that we have. The main images are always from Puerto mm. That's where That's where all the people go anyways. They go to Puerto Prince. They don't go to the other parts of the city. If they go, they probably go to Okap. What they is don't that? explore. What, what but is that's, the, a, that's another city. Okay. But it has an airport in it, so people probably go there because they could take direct flights there. Mm. And what do people show up to do? Is there a tourism industry? What's where, where, other than, you know, we're, we're talking macroeconomics when we talk about government help and um, grants and uh, fundraising and things like that. Where, where, let's say, even if it's not very high, but where, are the sources of income? Where are the things? I remember. Remember, I mentioned to you that I'm reading a a, a 1942 edition of a biography of Christopher Columbus, and the island of what was for a long time called Hispaniola was many things. One of them was the seat of power of the indigenous peoples when Columbus shows up, um, and so that island, the people, what what we now call the Bahamas, what we now call Cuba, the people there on those islands were deferential and a little bit afraid of the people in Hispaniola. And it was seen as the place to go. It had gold, it had power. That's where you went to go see kind of like the, the heads of state. And on the side, the author mentioned that there had been in one of these wharves, one of these um, bays that, that Columbus had found, that there had been a massive sugar plantation and creating millions of pounds of sugar a year. Um, I, it seems that that stuff is all gone. Where's income coming from on the island now? Is it tourism? Probably. Well, they have tourists do come because we have resorts and stuff and we have beaches. So tourism, we do have tourists. Mm -hmm. And then we have some parts there's a what is it called there's two cities jamie and atiboni they import stuff into the united states export stuff into the united states mm -hmm. like whole foods whole foods buys, buy mangoes from haiti mm, okay and there's other places that buy 
wheat, they buy cornmeal. Mm, what else do they buy? There's like other brands that come from Haiti that are here that they mm-hmm. buy from them. And then I'm pretty, I, to me, I think the most, the money that comes into the economy is the money from the people of Ward. Because we always, because we, we send money to our families all the time. Mm. So I think we're the, I think we send the most money into the, into the Haitian economy. Mm-hmm. Because we always, because we're always sending money. Right. And it's, it's um, you know, that's not, and like you had mentioned earlier, that's not necessarily a, to, to use a, a buzzword that's popular these days, a sustainable model that, you know, support a country by having people from other places send money in. That's not productive. It's not work. It helps. And yep. I'm sure, and it's, they tax I'm sure us. it's vital. Oh, the Haitian government taxes the money that comes in. Yes. And oh. what do they do? And then that's my problem. What are you doing with all that money? Yeah. Good question. Because right now somebody's probably sending money to their family right now and they're mm-hmm. taxed. So what's happening with all that tax money? How come roads are not billed with the mm-hmm. tax money that we're paying? You know, it's funny that we, here we are talking on Zoom. I'm on a laptop. You're on your laptop or phone in, you know, these kind of modern thing. And you're talking about electricity, running water, and built, making sure that a road is built. Yep. You understand how um, most Americans the things that they're worrying about are superficial compared to what you're talking about, which is just basic aspects of having a reasonably healthy and comfortable life. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you and I go to Mount Vernon High School, we don't worry, like, is the road open today or am I going to hit a pothole that rips the transmission out of my car? Like, I don't yep. think about that. Hmm. I think that very. I think they are very capable of fixing the roads. They just don't want to. It, is it as brazen as just pocketing the money? Like we're at the head. We're at the. We're at the top of the heap. We're gonna keep the money that's coming in and keep everybody on a lower level. Is it just that basic? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what goes through these people's mind mm-hmm. because you drive through these roads. It's not like you don't drive through them. You mm-hmm. know what they're like. You drive right. through the cities. You live in the country. You don't live in another country. But then again, they probably don't care because they send their families to other countries. As soon as they're in power, they send their families to, to where? other countries. Probably the United States, Canada, anywhere aboard that they could get mm. papers and stuff. Mm. And they send their families aboard, and their families don't have to live in the situation that the people are living in. Interesting. So go, it's go overseas when you're older, probably for schooling, university type things, and um, and not for the politicians, to, right? Yeah, for exactly. It's interesting how your um, uh, there's so many parallels just at different levels between things like government and media. And, and uh, you know, the power dynamic, it, of course, in the United States, it's a different flavor. It's a different angle. But um, there, there are quite a, bit, quite a few parallels. When in, in the United States, remember, we've talked about uh, the elite private boarding schools, Kent, Hotchkiss, um, Exeter Academy. You know, what, what those, and these are $40,000 a year and up private boarding schools. And our elite go to those schools, right? They don't go to Mount Vernon High School. You know, they don't go to Truman. They all go to, um, they'll go to Kent and what they, what's done there and what's taught there is radically different than from what will happen like in a regular public school. It's, it's oddly the same. You had mentioned as Go ahead, Emma. Oh, no, you could go. I was going to say it's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, that's, that's what made me think of speaking with you when we, had, um, when we had our group chat on Friday because, you know, it's, it's kind of like looking at this, you know, we're watching the same movie to some degree, even though we're in different places. You see a lot of the same stuff. Um, you had mentioned as well that uh, your I think it was your mother. I mentioned Doc and baby Doc Duvalier. And you had said that, I believe it was she who had mentioned 
that things were better then. Do I have that right? Yeah. Because we don't learn it like that. I remember in school, in grade school, these were seen as kind of, you know, when you read about it in your history class, they're kind of tiptoeing around the tulips as, uh, you know, some decent things, but not so good. And I didn't understand kind of corporate official history back then in, in, in grade school and middle school. But it was kind of hard to tell, like it was almost like the writer couldn't couldn't quite say that this was a good leader or a bad leader. It, it was it was generally bad. But you said that your mother had mentioned that she preferred that. Why? Um, no, she didn't, like she didn't prefer it because I would have to ask her, but she left already. But it was it was better. The people were stable. They were not afraid to walk out on the street, and they had the necessities that they needed during that time period. Mm -hmm. So they were living their life. And if you look at those pictures, you don't see where trash is on the ground in Haiti, where it's ruined or anything. Their trees are flourishing in the country and they're cultivating by using the earth and stuff. It's like people say that Cuba and Russia are dictatorships, but I never see the people complaining. They don't complain. And they like to say that Duvalier was a dictator, but did the people seek your help? Did the people seek outside help from anyone? Or did they complain about their leadership? I feel like other countries like to mind <laughs> it's uh, other people's business, which they probably should stay out of because if the people are not calling for help, why are you, why are you even going in saying that they need your help? And you're talking about present day. You're talking about people going in now and... Oh, no, I was talking back then because saying oh, that, really? you know... Well, what happened? No, then? back then too. Oh, really? Okay. But like Aristide and stuff, like... Because mm -hmm. I didn't watch the full document, but I think the United States deployed in Haiti for mm -hmm. a number of times mm -hmm. because I don't even know why they deployed. But I remember I did a presentation about their deployment in Haiti and they stayed there. And then sending the mini stars to Haiti. I don't see how they helped, but but by the only thing that I think they did was rape the woman and bring their diseases to Haiti. The mini yeah. stars. But really? that's in my opinion. And and so where I'm, where were they coming from? That's not a term I'm I'm familiar with. Um, no, the UN. <laughs> that's who. Oh. I just used the, the Haitian word. Sorry. Okay. So that's the United Nations coming in and causing a mess. Sounds like a yes. terrible mess. That certainly, let me tell you, that's not in the history book. That's not what you read if you go to Wikipedia or one of these places. Um, we're, we're taught that the United Nations and some of these, you know, extra governmental world government type things come in and do nothing but help. What you said is completely opposite of that. I don't think they're helping. I think they're just here to push their agendas, and I don't even know what their agenda is. But I don't see if they were so help. If they were so helpful, how come nothing has changed yet? Yeah, and it's been a long time. I mean, this is your. This is um, you know me me talking to you, and I remember reading about these kinds of things, and you you learn. I don't know about now, but I mean, I, I know about the Haitian Revolution in the early 1800s because of what I had in history class in New York City Public School. Like it was covered as an event. Um, and then there's a long period where you don't, I mean, of course, we, you know, I didn't study Haiti per se directly, but you don't hear about the aftermath. Everything skips up until about the 1960s. And then you hear about, Baby Doc and Baby Doc Duvalier, Aristide, and, and that's about it. You don't hear about any of the other years. I don't know about them either because I didn't go to school in Haiti. I went to school in the United States, and I learned history from the United States perspective. Not mm -hmm. from my, not from the Haitians' perspective. Right. Do you speak with your elders very much um, about past Haiti per se, or is it just more things like when you go back and visit or when you um, are just talking informally around the house? 
I don't know. I'm just looking into it right now. Because mm. I realize that I need to know my history. Well, I think it really helps. I mean, and, and one of the things, you know, you talk about here, we get into the conspiratorial part of the podcast. So, you know, me and my reputation with that. And I like to welcome, into the, welcome you, Emily, into the conspiracy community. So be ready to be called all the names that I get called. But knowing, but knowing really good history, knowing what, ha, you know, what, it sounds kind of corny to say, but what really happened uh, can make you, you know, somewhat, I don't know if dangerous is the right word, but you'll be able to recognize patterns that most people can't because what they'll see in the history books or in kind of the establishment sites is what I call approved history, right? It's been authorized and for public consumption. And then when you, I mean, look at what you just said, where you have people coming from the United Nations and cook, you know, contributing to nothing but horrific acts. That's not, I'm telling you right now, that's not, you're not going to find that in corporate media or school history. So if you were to dig a little bit deeper, um, it's, it's kind of like being shaken awake and you can't ever go back to sleep. I sigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's you, what what happens is you you know you then it, it's a it's a ripple effect where you you pick up knowledge, let's say that's very deep and profound, and you pass it on to other people your 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 children, your friends. You know, you talk about it with your family. I mean, imagine you and this will probably happen. You find out things about Haitian history. And then you ask the elders and they, you know, you ask your, your, your grandparents or your uncles and aunts and parents, and then they'll lead you further. You know what I mean? Like, and you just keep digging and you get to things that are surprising to say the least, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's, you know, you become, you have the acumen and you have the uh, intellectual firepower to teach others um, and now that you've been in presentational speaking with me, you can certainly use your powers of rhetoric and dialectic to do that. And that's how this all works. I think yeah. everyone should invest in learning their history mm -hmm. in order to not repeat the same mistakes. Well, we're watching some mistake repeating going on right now, right? We're seeing uh, in our very early June 2020 with the United States all in chaos you know yes. ten, 10 days ago it wasn't doing this yet all of a sudden coordinated all at the same time in various places all kinds of foolishness going on and everybody has the bit between their teeth and they're digging in their heels and pushing whatever as you said agendas they have and using this as an excuse um, I've seen people post things on social media that say let's just kind of get along and remember that we are people and those people are getting crucified as not really understanding what's going on. And that's just, I just stay out. Like, I'm not, that's not a conversation I'm going to get involved in. I think I watched the news for the first time. <laughs> I think, um, what's today? Today's Tuesday yep. on Sunday. And I was yeah. horrified. I was like, you know what? I, I scared my nephew by accident. We scared oh, really? my nephew by accident. Oh, wow. Because he's seven, he was looking at it. He was like, "I'm not going back writing anymore." I was like, "Oh my goodness, you're always exaggerating stuff." No, well, I'm I mean, like, I was like, that's why I didn't want you to stay here with us to watch it. Mm -hmm. But he stayed, and he was like, "I don't feel like going back writing anymore." Yeah, and people don't people don't understand that. I mean, you see, you see a lot of the like you've mentioned colorism in in Haiti, like whatever the modern day American equivalent to that is. Everybody kind of picking and backing up behind their tribe and 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 getting defensive and all i ever ask uh, with stuff like that is well who's going to benefit from that right are, are you going to gain from I have that no idea i don't know i i don't i don't know i don't see each group and you know the race card is an amazing card for the people who cast these spells on the united states population uh, it's very My effective thing is i feel like i I agree with the protest thing because you have to, they need to protest. They're tired. It's, it's kind of been, you can't keep doing the same thing for 30 mm -hmm. plus years. So the same to, to a people to people. Mm -hmm. It's like someone does something to me and every time I ask them nicely to stop, 
they don't stop. At one point, I'm going to lash out to make you understand since I don't see you comprehend what I'm saying to you mm-hmm. when I'm talking to you very nicely. The only thing I don't agree with is the stealing and looting. Those okay. people are not here. They're not here to protest Mr. Marilla. They're just taking advantage of the situation to gain for their own benefits. Like, well, I, you're I, taking I, the purpose away from the people who want yeah. a change. Like, what are you doing? They ruined the... I don't know what part of Bronx they ruined. Like, those are bodegas. Yes. They're ruining somebody's bodega. Right. What did they do to you? Those are the same delis that you go and buy your sandwiches from. Mm-hmm. Like, those, those are Arabs, they're Hispanics, they're Black people who own those stuff, mm-hmm. who probably immigrated here. Yes. To get a better life, just like how you're wishing for a better life. And I'm like, they're taking away from the people who really want a change. And they're, they're ruining the whole entire protest. Because they're, they're stealing. For their own, you're going into a store, you're stealing bags. How is that promoting change? You're just falling into the stereotypes that they already label you as. Well, again, I mean, think about this. They're, they're from what I've seen online and in anti-social media, I've, there are people who would crucify you for saying what you're saying. They're like, oh, no, that's what has to happen. That's what needs to happen. They need to take um, stuff because they deserve it and are owed it from all of the inequality in the country. They'll push back on you. I happen to agree with you. I don't understand why going to a bodega on Fordham Road, burn, taking everything in it, burning it to the ground, um, I don't understand how that factors in to the atrocity that happened in Minneapolis. Um, like you're hurting but we your would, own we would take pockets. abuse for that. Yes, I agree. Like you want to hurt their pockets? Don't buy. From, don't buy from those big corporations. Buy from your own. Try that. Because I, I made, I purposely made a post in Snapchat, and I was like, "Here's some black businesses, y'all could go buy from to support. You know, go support these businesses. There's ways that you could really hurt." somebody's pockets if you all if you don't decide to buy from them but you have to do it as a whole not one person i know when and taking like that's like losing 20 dollars for them <laughs> yeah well there i see that there's a one day i, I don't know i want to say it's june 7th july 7th i don't know i saw this like one day we're not gonna buy yeah july stuff. 7th july 7th i don't understand that because on july 8th and i think this came this might have come up in our chat yeah on july like, 8th everybody went into to to right, you and Kayla were talking about July eighth. It's it's back to business. Like a one day of no purchasing is a. Well, I don't think 8th, it's very realistic. And then B, then what? July eighth, they better go buy black people business from black people. We'll see. Cause... Well, well, those businesses, some of them got torched on Fordham Road. There's a protest today, yeah. at five p.m. in Mount Vernon, where well, I, I work. Why is it so late? I don't know, but I'm not confident. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm not confident that those stores on Fourth Avenue. They better be peaceful. I'm other, sorry. That's what it says. It says wear a mask, be peaceful. But you and I are in Mount Vernon High School every day. We've been there at the same time for the last four years. And it's because... supposedly a peaceful learning environment. And even though I, I en- enjoy it there and, and I work with great people, I'm, I'm, I'm not even blowing smoke in your face. I think admin does a good job. I think a lot of people try hard, but there's a, there's a lot of times when it's not peaceful. Let's just put it that way. And I hope that this is a peaceful protest saying, look, let's try to fix what's broken. I really hope so because I have friends who are going. I really don't want them to get hurt Mm -hmm. because I would go, but I have work at Mm -hmm. the time they're going to protest. Like I would be at work. Right. I was like, why isn't this earlier? But I have friends who are going, and mm-hmm. I pray to God that they don't get hurt. And this should be peaceful. It should be. <laughs> burning Fourth Ave? What? Don't burn for it. Do not burn the Ave because what are you really doing? Well, Most I of the think... people on the Ave are immigrants mm-hmm. who probably yes. own businesses. Yes. <laughs> like they're Africans. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think Africans. I don't know which part of Africa they're from. <laughs> No, but I know what they're you're saying. Arabs, right, walk down. I've walked down four. Yes. Like, just relax. These people are not big corporations who have insurance that are going to rebuild their business in five seconds for them. Mm-hmm. Like, 
it was probably already hard enough for them to have that business mm-hmm. because of their backgrounds. And then you're just making it harder probably for them to rebuild the business if, when you if, burn it down. Right. If rebuild if it they can, Yes. If they're able to rebuild if it. If they're able to. And it comes uh, after a three-month hiatus of very few businesses can open and run. So you've hamstrung these people for months. And now it's like a, a death blow. And you know what? I mean, this is the cycle of history that I keep telling you and your friends about is now you have only the more wealthy corporations, groups, people, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it, are because they have a larger bank account and more means and more capital, only those people are able to rebuild. So while everybody yes. is going crazy, you're right. Dolce Gabbana. Nike, Starbucks, they're going to be fine. They're going to like you're not them. hurting their pocket. Right. Why, don't, why don't we as a group of people just stop buying from them? Well, I think a lot of Americans like, of all colors are naive and I'm are naive and I'm especially angry at the people who are saying, "Oh, you know, and they're talking about and this is because of the the inequality in the United States. Well, you're going to get more of it when it's over because the only people who are going to be able to afford that property and rebuild are people with deep pockets because regular store owner guy and woman, they're not going to be able to do it. And now top of the pyramid consolidates and rebuilds on top of that. And now every, all the rest of us regular people are in an even smaller pen. Yeah. I'm Doug Marola and I approve of this message. <laughs> Cause like target can build back targets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gucci can build back Gucci. Yes. But that bodega that you burned down, Mm-hmm. I don't, it's it's like a ten percent chance that they have enough money to build that bodega back. Well, we have a we have a, a a small daycare, and if something serious were to happen to it, we would have to consider just folding the tent and going home, and telling our landlord, "Sorry, we're stick a fork in us. We're done. We can't we can't afford to do all the stuff that we did to to build it up. That's not we don't have the means to do it." And, um, you know, we're middle-class employed Americans, but we can't swing it. But Target can. Nike sure can. So when, of I, course. See, when I see people justifying stealing in general, I mean, I don't think anyone should go into Starbucks and steal some sandwiches or go to Nike, you know, go to the Nike store in Manhattan and steal some Jordans. But I, I that's repellent i mean that's that's not yeah because they're doing it for their own gains they're not part of the protesting Mm. that's what like that's what i said they're ruining what the like there's people who really want to have change yes and then there's the ones that are oh this is the perfect time for me to go steal a a pair of jordans because i i can't buy it well the press is calling everyone peaceful protesters and people who have posted images of the looting and the burning that you're talking about, they're getting censored. And I'm wondering why the press is being so disingenuous, why they're being so fake about it. And I'm wondering if the press down in Haiti is as bad as the corporate press here. Is it as is it the same? <laughs> oh, really? Well, you're probably the smart one. You're, you're, you, you go to the head of the class for that. That's probably the right way to go about it. No, I wouldn't know. Huh. Yeah, that's, but, that's that's the right idea. Man. Is it destroying your neighborhood? Because I was talking to Dante last night at like 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this. We were like, you're destroying your home. Like, do you and understand you- that there are black people and Hispanic people and people of color who work in these places? Like, Were you guys in agreement? People- yeah. Because okay. <laughs> she made a post just like mine and I was like, yep, I agree with you. Because there are people who live paycheck to paycheck. Yes. And those are the jobs that they sadly have to rely on to fend for their families. There is ways you can protest without touching those businesses. Mm-hmm. Be, like, you could really do it without having to touch those businesses. And yes. Because somebody's going to wait. You're really going to have, you're going to make somebody wake up in the morning who probably did not watch the news. And if they don't get a message from their job saying, I'm sorry, you can't come in because we're, this location is out of business for the for the moment. They're gonna go to work and then they're gonna have to go home, empty-handed. Mm. Right. 
Yes, I saw, uh, I saw a video of a, and there was an older black woman on TV. Uh, I, I mean, I was a clip on YouTube. I don't watch TV, but um, she was crying and she was in Minneapolis and there she was crying. She's like, they've torched. I think it was Minneapolis. It might've been one of the other cities. It's hard to tell after all the images, let me tell you. They all um, look the same at the moment. Yeah, I know. And she was saying, you know, oh, they torched Dollar General. They torched CVS. They burned. And she mentioned the local grocery store. She's crying. She's like, these are where I go to buy my medicine. This is where I go to buy food. And I don't know where I can go. The buses aren't running. I, there's nowhere to go. And, and I, almost, I almost stopped the video, rewound, and hit play and record it on my phone and put it on like Instagram. But I don't, I don't think the, the people who need that message already got it. The, 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 everybody getting blinded by color and um, getting, you know, the, with the people at the top of the pyramid fanning the flames. I don't know. I'm glad you guys are talking about it among your friends. I don't think I was going to make any headway by doing that. So I didn't. Because I think they tried to destroy a medical center. I don't know where it was. And that's what sparked the conversation between Dante and I. Mm-hmm. Why are you hurting hospitals? Right. I, you do know you're going to need aid, right? Mm-hmm. God forbid that this gets worse and more people get hurt. You're going to need aid. You're going to need those hospitals. Do not, mm-hmm. like, don't destroy the hospitals that you need. You need those hospitals. Right. And then we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic also. And there are people in incubators right now who mm-hmm. cannot breathe. Yes. And when you destroy the hospitals and you cut the power, you just took a bunch of people's lives. Yeah. Who don't the, even know what's happening around the world right now. I know. When the because dust, they're induced. Yeah. When the dust settles um, and the aftermath is when they tally the aftermath, I, you know, I just, you know, the people who you have people dismissing violence robbing and burning because they're angry without counting the cost uh, very cavalierly and here you are a teenager and you pinned it down instantly why aren't there more people like you why aren't you queen of the united states why don't we put you in no, no thank you <laughs> i'm okay <laughs> uh, but no i i'm with the protesters i'm not with the looters i'm sorry. okay the protesters, you have the right to protest because mm-hmm. you're hurt and it hurts because having, if you have kids, if you have like small children, if you have teenagers and you have to stay here and explain to them, this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Now you have to act like, why should they have to act a certain way? Right. Into a place they were born. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't choose to be born this way. Right. So I agree with the protesters. Protest. Because, yeah. but and, and, the people looting, you're not helping the protesters. You're doing this for your own gain and benefits. You're not doing it because you want to help. Hmm. You're just you just on an advantage, and you're you're like, oh, might as well steal. I wanted these shoes anyways. What's the tone and tenor? You're you know you're a young black woman on Instagram, on Snapchat, social media. Is your opinion very popular? Are you an outlier? Are people in your circle saying the same thing or is it different well the people i have on snap they're all saying they are they don't really they don't agree with the looting but they mm. the protesting yes mm. and then i have some people who like i seen someone they're actually saying no do not loot like the people on my snap are saying to, today's protest is peaceful mm-hmm. please do not spark anything let it be a peaceful protest Mm -hmm. they wanted to go i seen a girl post something that said they wanted to go raid the Westchester, the Westchester mall really next to whole foods and and the kids and they're like stop like just stop looting that's not a way to protest Mm, interesting but there is no right way to protest either so i don't know well yeah i mean i don't know it's 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 one of those things that's there i mean look at look at your home country of haiti it's you said that people protest all the time i'm not sure it's working you know, I, 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 my, yeah. my take, you know, make me the dictator of the United States for two years. First of all, I won't, I don't want the job, but um, teaching people, you know, what, you know, how to, how to spot people who are trying to take advantage of division, divide and conquer. Like uh, my thing is very simple. I would, I don't believe in force, but divide and conquer works. So I make everybody read Caesar's The Gallic Wars, where he gives you chapter and verse on 
how divide and conquer works so that when people do it, you can point it out and say, look at what they're doing. Look at how they're trying to ruin our area by dividing us, regular folk, just like in Bacon's Rebellion, and they are using it to further their own ends. And if you have people who get it, when you know people come in to try to divide and conquer and gain and burn and loot, it won't work. But I'm kind of in fantasy land when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's what I do with you guys, but I don't, you know, on a grand scale, I don't know how other than people like you teaching or showing or explaining things in a very sober, intelligent manner, I don't know how you move forward. Uh, who knows? But <laughs> today they're doing Blackout Tuesday, but I don't think the people got the message correctly to not put the hashtag Black Lives Matter on it because it's blocking all the um other news that people are trying to put because all you see is black. Yeah, explain, <laughs> explain that. I saw that on Instagram and I got it right away when I see 10 people like, I, I don't know, I'm not a follower. I, so, you know, everybody's just doing the same thing. Like let's bang pots at 7 p.m. and, and sing songs for the nurses. Like I, I don't, I, I don't that's just not my for... nature. But what's the deal? Explain the Blackout Tuesday stuff. Um, I just woke us, up please. and I don't know. Somebody posted it. Where is it? I don't know. I think it's for music. I think there are, it's, it's for the music industry this time where you don't stream anything and you don't buy anything. But the thing is, do not use the, um, the hashtag Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. because it's going to block black. It's going to block, um, all the other news. Yes. That is, that's using, um, the hashtag. Yeah. It's going to bury all the other hashtags. It's going to completely yeah. overwhelm it. But when they first made the message, they forgot to put that. Yeah, well, you know, you know, online protests fail, if you ask me, with that. Um, but it's, yeah, you don't stream. Don't stream anything, and you don't buy anything. Mm-hmm. How, many, uh, how many more minutes, Emily, do you have? Oh, I need to go, actually. Okay, I'm going to ask you one quick question. Um, and answer in a sentence or two, and then we'll finish. If I placed you on a plane and you flew to Paris, France, or anywhere in France, how good is your French? Can you just speak French natively from your background, or has has the language changed too much? I would understand the people, mm-hmm. and I'll probably be able to have a simple conversation with them. Mm-hmm. That's why um, when I go to school in the fall, I chose my, I think, I don't know if it's my minor. I think I'm my, it's, it's for French because I need to perfect it. Mm. So I put my, the language that I want to study is French. Okay. That's like, great. That as well. Mm-hmm. That's a smart move. That's brilliant. That's be great. Multilingual already have a leg up. That's fantastic. Well, Emily, we solved, I think we solved a lot of problems today. I think we made the world an amazing place. People need to listen to people like us to better themselves. Yeah. Do you agree? all right i'm gonna hit stop stay on for just a second we'll chat for two seconds all right thank you emily we'll talk soon